What if I told you that the very thing you use to protect your accounts, that little code that pops up on your phone, might be the easiest way for a hacker to break in? Today, we're throwing out everything you think you know about multi-factor authentication. We're going from SMS codes, straight through TOTP apps, all the way to the unhackable standard. I'm going to show you the weaknesses, the vulnerabilities, and the single best thing you can do to protect your entire digital life. Before we start, let me be fucking crystal clear. This channel is 100% focused on ethical hacking and defense. I'll share concepts about how attackers exploit systems, but you need to take that knowledge and use it for research. Read the papers, hit the books, and practice in your own secure labs. Do not accept from me to make crazy video, it is YouTube. All right, so let's start with the absolute basics. What exactly is multi-factor authentication, or MFA? It's actually pretty simple. Multi-factor authentication is a security method that requires you to prove your identity using more than one verification step. Instead of just entering a single password, multi-factor authentication forces you to combine two different kinds of evidence, adding multiple layers of protection to your account. To log in, you must provide proof from two or more of these core categories, or factors. First, we have something you know. This is your traditional security layer, your password, your PIN, or maybe the answer to a security question. Second, we have something you have. This is a physical item you possess. Think of your phone. That's where you get an authenticator app code or an SMS text. It could also be a dedicated piece of hardware, like a security key, such as a YubiKey, or a smart card. And third, we have something you are. This is biometric verification. It's part of your actual biology. This includes your fingerprint scan, your face ID, or an iris scan. The whole point of multi-factor authentication is that even if a hacker steals your password, something you know, they still can't get in because they don't have your phone, something you have. That's the theory, anyway. When people hear multi-factor authentication, they think of just codes on their phone, but there are different types of multi-factor authentication and the security level is not the same. Here are the main ones you should know. All right, so let's start with the one most of us use and the one you need to stop using today, SMS-based codes. This is the default multi-factor authentication for almost every app out there. And while it feels easy, this method is actually the easiest to break. Think of it like putting a cheap plastic screen door on a high security vault. It's just a formality that gives you a false sense of security. So how does it work? You log in, you receive a text message with a six digit code, simple, convenient, and unfortunately, catastrophically insecure. We have five major reasons why this 1970s technology has absolutely no place securing your modern bank account. The first reason, and this is the big one, is the SIM swap nightmare. An attacker doesn't even need to hack your phone. They call your mobile carrier, pretend to be you, use a little social engineering and convince support to move your phone number to their SIM card. Just like that. It's like stealing your physical mailbox key, except now, once they have your number, they get all your future SMS codes. Your email, your bank, your crypto, it could all be gone in minutes. The second reason, is the ghost of telecom past, also known as SS7. SMS runs on this ancient telecom network designed back in the 1970s, long before security was a serious concern. This network has known decades-old vulnerabilities that allow skilled attackers to intercept, reroute, or simply copy your text messages while they are in transit. You don't even know it's happening. Third, phishing is made easy. Even the simplest attack works. A hacker sets up a fake login page. You enter your password. The hacker then triggers your real bank to send you an SMS code and you, thinking you're on the real site, type the code straight into the attacker's fake page. Why does this work? Because SMS doesn't care what website you're on. It sends the code no matter what. Fourth, aside from security, sometimes your code just doesn't even show up. Network issues, roaming troubles, or your carrier's spam filter decides your bank is spam. This just makes your login unreliable and frustrating. And the fifth reason, malware can steal it. 
If you ever download a shady app, especially on an older Android device, and grant it SMS permissions, that app can simply read the incoming codes and forward them directly to the attacker. The phone is literally handing over the keys. Look, I will be fair. SMS is technically better than no multi-factor authentication at all, but that's the only nice thing I can say. For any sensitive account, your email, your bank, anything with money attached, you must avoid SMS. It is the weakest link and you are far too easy to compromise. So if SMS is dead, what should we be using? Let's talk about the first major upgrade, Authenticator apps that uses something called TOTP or time-based one-time passwords. We're talking about popular apps like Google Authenticator, Authy, or Microsoft Authenticator. These are the good guys, and this is where you need to move your accounts immediately. The concept here is simple, but the security is brilliant. When you set it up, you scan a QR code once. This process establishes a secret key that is now shared between the service, like your bank or your email, and your phone. From that point on, both your phone and the website use that key, along with the current time, to independently generate a brand new six-digit code every 30 seconds. The beautiful part is that this code only works once and it expires incredibly fast. The primary strength here is that this is an offline process. Since the code is generated locally on your device, it works without the internet and, crucially, without a SIM card. This means it is highly resistant to SIM swapping and those SS7 interception attacks we just talked about. The code never travels over a weak telecom network. It is the first major step toward achieving proper security. Now, it's not perfect. There are two main downsides you need to be aware of. First, if your phone is stolen and it's unlocked, the attacker can simply open the app and grab the codes while they have the device. So a strong phone lock is absolutely essential. Second, and this is a big one, if you lose your phone and you didn't save those backup codes the service gives you during setup, you will be completely locked out of your account. You have to treat those backup codes like cash, save them somewhere safe and offline, like a password manager or a safe deposit box. Time-based one-time passwords is great, but we can do even better. Next up, we move to the absolute gold standard in phishing protection, FIDO and the WebAuthn protocol, commonly implemented using hardware keys. These are devices like a YubiKey, a Google Titan key, or a Solo key, which plug right into your computer. But it can also be the security chip built into your modern smartphone that powers your face ID or fingerprint scanner. The mechanism is completely different from codes. FIDO doesn't use a shared secret key and a timer like TOTP. Instead, it uses public key cryptography. When you set it up, your security key creates a unique private cryptographic key that never leaves the device. When you log in, the website sends your key a unique challenge, and your key uses its private knowledge to digitally sign that challenge, proving it's really you. This is all done instantly. There are no codes involved, it's pure, unbreakable cryptography. The reason FIDO is considered the strongest multi-factor authentication available today boils down to one simple crucial point. It is phishing proof. Remember that clever phishing attack we talked about with SMS and TOTP where the hacker makes a fake website? That attack fails instantly with FIDO. Why? Because when the security key signs that unique challenge, it also checks the website's domain name. If the domain name is phishingsite.com, but your key is registered to authenticate bankofamerica.com, the key will simply refuse to sign the challenge. The hacker gets nothing. You are completely protected from the most common and damaging type of online attack. Beyond phishing resistance, it's entirely hardware-based. There is no SMS to intercept, there's no code to screenshot, and the service you are logging into never even stores your private key. It just stores the public half. So, what are the drawbacks? Well, it needs compatible devices, although adoption is getting better every day. And yes, keys can be lost, but this isn't the end of the world. You simply register at least two physical keys, 
one for your primary use, and a backup key hidden securely at home. For your most critical accounts, your primary email, your password manager, your bank, you need to move to FIDO Keys. It is the fastest login, the easiest to use, and unequivocally the most secure protection you can get. Before we send you off to upgrade your security, I have two absolute must-know rules that apply, no matter if you're using TOTP or a FIDO key. These are the things hackers love to see you forget. First, lock down those backup codes. Look, we just spent all this time convincing you to use strong, multi-factor authentication. But what happens if you lose your phone or your dog eats your YubiKey? You're locked out. That's why your bank and email service give you those little lists of backup codes. They are your emergency keys and they bypass multi-factor authentication entirely. So here is the golden rule for storing them. They must be saved securely and offline. Don't screenshot them and leave them in your photo album. Don't drop them in a text file on your desktop. They need to go into a dedicated, encrypted password manager, or even better, print them out and stick them in a secure physical place, like a lockbox or a safe at home. Treat every single one of those codes like $100 in cash, because that's exactly what they are, a one-time ticket back into your kingdom. Second, the ultimate security rule is about people, not code. We just went over the best technology, but here's the brutal truth. The human factor is always the weakest link. You will eventually get a call, a text, or an email from someone claiming to be Google, your bank, or your mobile carrier. They'll say there's a security issue, and they just need you to confirm the code they conveniently sent you. Stop. Never. Do it. If anyone, and I mean anyone, ever asks you for a multi-factor authentication code over the phone or in a message, you should immediately assume they are an attacker. Your bank or service provider will never call you and ask you for that code. That code is for you to prove your identity to their system, not the other way around. It is your final line of defense, so keep it private, always. So here's the mission I'm giving you. If you are still using SMS, make it your goal this week to upgrade those accounts to a TOTP authenticator app. It's free, it's easy, and it stops SIM swapping instantly. So, you might be wondering, if FIDO and TOTP are so strong, can a hacker still get around them? The short answer is, yes, but it's much, much harder, and the hacker usually has to rely on your mistake. If you found this breakdown helpful and you're now ready to ditch those old text messages, Hit that like button and subscribe for more deep dives. What multi-factor authentication method are you using? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. One life, one shot, make it count.